didn't just start, so maybe you will just uh, start telling. Maybe we can start from the architecture so that you will tell about the work from this uh, SALTA project and the university and how uh, you try to rethink it and also taking into account the architectural issues and the educational issues. So the main idea was to create a shared learning space between these two locations. They're located 500 kilometers apart. So how do you create this learning space? Because our idea was to have students on both locations working together with teams consisting of members from both locations. So uh, usually universities are talking about this old way of learning spaces. I mean, from the old times, we had the auditorium, we have the labs, we have the classrooms, but now we're talking about a new type of space, an extended space, a shared space between two physical locations. We can't really build more learning, physical learning spaces because the number of students in 2040, I think it will be around 600 million students worldwide in higher education. So you can't really just build new buildings to support all this kind of teaching and learning. Of course, we need the physical meeting places. They're essential. You can't just move everything online. We need people to have social contact, to interact, to be in a face-to-face -face situation. But it depends, when do they need to do this? What can we do in an hybrid environment? What can we do in an online environment? And what has to be physical? So this is uh, essentially when I think when you design new campuses or, or new buildings or, or learning environments. When we design this uh, learning space uh, for the university, this shared space, first of all, we wanted to create a portal. And, and by that, I mean a space where we have real-time communication. It should be an always on connection between the two rooms. You don't have to go in in the morning and turn on your Zoom or your Teams or, or Skype or whatever and then make the connection. It should just go in and say hi in the morning. This is important to, to make this connection more natural. It's just like looking into a window to the other side. And of course, to make this uh, controllable in an environment, you have to have control on the lights, on the sound, on the acoustics, on the environment and also to have a full control on this portal there's no there are no windows there because we need to have control about all the lights coming in the the sound and everything so it's really tiresome to, to spend this time in the portal for many hours i mean if you don't see the daylight uh, and uh, so that's why we have to have uh, let's say we have to have uh, daylight bulbs so you get some kind of, of uh, energy from the light. You have to have fresh air all the time. You have to have comfortable furniture and, and all these kind of basic needs that you really don't think about. But they're, they're there to improve the quality of the experience. And then we have small group rooms because this is like a small ecosystem. But today there, there's a, let's say a fashion word to, to create so-called flexible learning spaces which can turn into a, a frontal lecture. It could be group rooms. It could be whatever you like. And this is a challenge for us to do audiovisual systems, at least. Because if you think about this flexibility, it could be nice. But if you think about this, this is a flexible tool. I can do everything with this uh, Swiss Army knife. But will it do a good job? That's the big question. I can yeah. fix everything, but I will struggle. So this is also about the, the same thing regarding flexibility. It can be fixed, but it has to have the, uh, defined by activities. You don't have to nail the, <laughs> the, the floorboards or, or fix it, but it, it, it's, it's, this room is dedicated yeah. for, let's say, group work. This is for frontal pedagogy. This is for uh, exams. So it's more like you define some kind of clusters of rooms. And then we have a third space that we call the decompression zone, which is a place where there are no screens. There's no technology. There's just a coffee machine. 
and a big sofa where you can relax and lay down. Students, for instance, or learners in the design, in the uh, maintenance of the learning space was something very um, innovative for, for, my, for my part because I never... I never saw that in my career. They tried to create uh, social corridors that could be that could emulate, in a way, what's going on in uh, in real life. So with breaks, with possibility, with a portal on twenty four seven, so they the students could chat together, could really ease from formal kind of learning activities into informal learning activities. The university in Trondheim is is designing a new learning space, or not not a new learning space, a new campus, as a matter of fact. So it's around 95,000 square meters and, and they have to think in different ways to create this kind of, uh, let's say, holistic uh, way of creating a campus. Uh, and and uh, they're talking about the physical design, they're talking about the technology, the organization and the social mission of the university. And they're using uh, ideas from uh, a person called Thornberg. It talks about uh, campfires in cyberspace. Education happens on campus, but now we cannot, we cannot think in that way any, any longer. So we have to, to think that a parallel campus, a parallel university has to happen in the clouds, in virtual um, space in a way, and that you can connect with that kind of campus uh, or try your mobile or your laptop or you know, and using maybe not just the building as they are, uh, but the resources around. Uh, we were both at the at a seminar um, a few weeks ago, and it was an interesting professor uh, talking from Germany, uh, Nindemann is the name, and she's talking about how it's possible also to use uh, all the kind of buildings in town, for instance. So you transform the physical use of one building and you think to, you know, you think out of the box uh, that you can have, uh, you know, maybe the library or maybe uh, a cafe or something that also is a part of the campus. If you have the possibility to access through virtual technology uh, to the same resources, uh, I mean, the campus in the cloud will, I guess, um, first of all, be a replica of the physical campus. So it will be a specific one. But we have, and we are moving, uh, particularly um, within the European Union, to create, you know, um, common resources. But that would be something that maybe is not linked to a specific university, but are educational resources that are open access for everybody. Now we tried to, to just to move whatever we did before, like normal mm -hmm. lectures face-to-face, -face, into the uh, digital arena. And that doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. Just mirroring what we already done for hundreds of years into the digital uh, space. And now you see the artifacts of this. People are getting tired. The students uh, close down their cameras. There's no engagement. They're feeling alone. The teacher is feeling alone because he doesn't see anyone on the screens. The students... How do, how do you actually... Do you have any policy already for this? Uh, is it like uh, all the cameras should be turned on obligatory? Or how do you actually... Do you make any rules upon this? Because I think these are the new kind of ethics that everyone should go through. And I don't know if there should be any universal rules or maybe uh, any each university or school should make its own rules. What do you think about it? It's, it's very difficult. And when you make something mandatory, yeah, I mean, uh, because my screen is on, uh, but if you have 50 students, you kind of, you, you know, the screen could be on, but doesn't mean that the student is engaged. That would be the same reproduction of what happens in an auditorium during a lecture. You have hundreds of students in front of you. Are they really listening to what you're saying? Are they really learning? You don't know. Maybe they're just, you know, texting or whatever on there. Record your lecture and then post it on a platform, on a learning platform, so that the student can access the, uh, the video lecture whenever they want, from wherever they are. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for your time. Thank we you. appreciate it really, really a lot. Thank you.